Hallelujah. Has he been a provider and a sustainer even in this season? Can I get a witness that God has been a provider? He's kept my mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You made the way. And I don't know how, but you did it. Yes, Lord. You made the way. this test but holding on to faith you know best and nothing can catch you by surprise you've got this figured out and you're watching us now thank you lord so when it looks as if we can't win in your arms and step in and everything we need you supply you've got this in control and now I know that you you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over Lord you you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way come on that's a good place to praise him right there lord you made a way come on y'all know it y'all can sing it you made a way And it looked as if it was over. Oh, Lord, you, you made, a way. made a way. And we're standing and here. We're standing here. Only, Only because you said made you made a way. You yes, you did. Made a way. When our backs were.
God bless you, Great Commission Baptist Church. This is truly a blessing to be here tonight to share with you what God has placed on my heart. Let me say to uh, my pastor, Dr. Douglas C. Brown, thank you so much, Pastor, for this opportunity to exercise the gift that God has given me. Uh, this afternoon, just for our reasoning for a little bit, I would like to talk to you from the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. Romans, chapter 1, verses 16 through 20, and I'll read those verses. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, thou shalt live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that there are, they are without excuse. Heavenly Father, I thank you for, again for another opportunity to be able to share the truths of your word, Lord God. And God, I pray tonight as I share with the, this body of believers that uh, your word will be uh, enlightened in their hearts and uh, that there will be a compassion to serve you even uh, at a greater capacity. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and ask it all, amen. Tonight from Romans chapter one and verses 16 through 20, I would like to reason with you from the thought of making an impact for God's kingdom. Uh, the author of this book, many of you know, is Paul, and Paul had a desire to go to Rome, and so he wrote this letter because that he wasn't able to attend, and he had given some instructions, and one of the things that stood out uh, in this, uh, these passages was that Paul wanted to make an impact for God's kingdom. The purpose of God's word is for humanity to hear and to be encouraged, but also warn that a refusal to do as God requires will bring only great difficulty and heartache to all or who are concerned. It is a serious matter to deliberate refusal to do as God commands. Therefore, I would have to ask you a question tonight. Are you prepared to tell God no? Some of us will and some of us have. People are seeing all around them the deficit that's happening in our world with methods of how do I deal with various matters? How should I approach my situation. Even in our secular counseling, the licensed counselors are struggling with methods to provide hope. Uh, my brother-in-law, Mark Tucker, who's an officer in, Fort, in Dallas, Texas, told me one of the greatest uh, calls, the, the majority of their calls that they're receiving is marital calls where there are families that are having problems. God wants to help us with everything that we have. God wants to provide a hope for whatever situation that we may have. However, let me assure you, if you fail to glorify God, he will give you the wisdom and the strength to do as he commands. I can say this with great confidence and say to anyone that have issues, God can deliver you and guarantee you eternal life. First thing what I want to lift in these first few verses is to make an impact for God's kingdom, there must be a reverence of God's kingdom. You must have this uh, uh, admiration, an awe, a devotion. Uh, there must be some amazement about doing God's kingdom. And Paul allows us to see how that could happen. In verse 16, Paul says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation, everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. 
Paul explains why he's not ashamed of the gospel. It's because of the content, the substance of the gospel, and that is Jesus Christ. Look what he says in the verse. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And here we see that this Christ he's talking about in Romans 1 and 4, it says, and declare to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The word declare in verse 4 comes from this Greek word harathentos. And uh, when you look at this word, it's used eight times uh, in the Greek text. And in order to get to understanding, you have to understand the semantic, semantic range. And when you understand the range, you know specifically which word to use here. And the word was used was the Declare, and it, it, the word's intent is to show a boundary, to show something specific and set limitations. Nobody else could do this but the Son of God. That's what Paul says, and declare to be the Son of God in verse 4. This is an aorist passive um, uh, participle, and what Paul is saying here is that what happened through the Son was God's power, and it was only him that could achieve this very thing. Uh, the pre-existing son who he entered into human experience as the promised Messiah, even over death. Paul says, for I'm not ashamed of the power of God unto salvation and everyone that believeth to the Jew and to the Greek as well. Romans 1 and 14 says, Paul says that I am a debtor both to the Greek, to the barbarians, but both to the wise and to the unwise. Just like Paul, I have realized the turns life can have on people. And I'm here just as you said Sunday, Dr. Brown. Yes, I'm all in. I'm just like Paul. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm here declaring that God can help anyone with their situation. Here humanity was, was lost. Uh, we were uh, alienated from God, but God through his providential wisdom made a way to bring us back in fellowship with him. Psalms 39 and, and Psalm, the 39th number of Psalms in verse seven through eight says, and now Lord, what wait I for? My hope is indeed deliver me from my transgressions Make me not the reapproach of the foolish. The psalmist understands how we should come to terms with who God is. This psalmist began to recognize that his lifestyle wasn't correct. And he said to, to the Lord in this psalms, he called him Adonai. This word Adonai is used 439 times, it creates this reality that his authority and, and what happens is that the, the psalmist recognized that there was an authority and he gave that authority to God and he says, Adonai, you are the sovereign one. You are the one that I've seen do things in my life that I'm not able to, I'm frail. If you'll read that 39 number of Psalms, he said, I'm frail. He asked God, God, show me how to, to number my days. I, I wanna be in line with you, God. And listen, I'm like Paul, I'm, an, I'm, in, I'm a debtor, both the Greek and to the barbarian. Listen, I'm, I'm, make, I'm here to tell everyone that is seeking to know how they get through their situation. It's in God's word. Paul says that he's not ashamed. And listen, uh, when you have a reverence of God, there's this admiration, this awe, this amazement that you have. And uh, the psalmist goes on to realize that God's authority, and he turns and say with the word hope, to, uh, to vav tie, the word means uh, enduring patience and confidence that God will decisively act for the salvation of his people. The psalmist, he understood that God could provide the hope that he needed and he was waiting patiently, kind of like Noah when God told Noah to build an ark and Noah had to ride on the ark until the flood was over. But Noah knew that God could deliver. And the psalmist is declaring to us as well. And Paul is clearly saying that there is an amazement about God. And these verses speak to the power of God. The nations, many nations depend on military power. A king relies himself for, uh, 
readies himself for battle, is interested in the number of his warriors. Humanism is, a, an, is, is an essence of depending on man and his ability and the probabilities of his success. The psalmist is not taking a last resort. His expectant faith is confidence, as I said, just like Noah. That's why Noah went ahead and prepared his ship. So Paul makes it clear that he has a reverence of God and it's because of the power. It's because of the, uh, the, cont the contents of what is happening and is seen in what Jesus Christ did. And then the next thing I'd like to point out is to have, make an impact for God's kingdom. Not only do you have to have a reverence of God's kingdom, this should have a, a, a pull on your heart. You should want to do it because it has an impact on people's lives. Paul says in Romans 1 and 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as is written, the just shall live by faith. Here Paul brings out uh, this point about uh, its uh, revealing of God's kingdom. Not only do you have to have a reverence of God's kingdom, what really pulls you in to make you want to make an impact for God's kingdom is the revealing of God's word. That is to be informed to something is being brought to light. Look what he says in this verse. For there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith as it is written, the just shall not live by faith. The just, shall, the just shall live by faith. We know that God creates faith by the gospel and righteousness is revealed from faith to faith. And what happens is, you remember in Romans 10 and 17, when God said, how can they, the scripture says, how can they, um, how can they hear without a preacher? And the, because he said, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So when we hear God's word, it is God that activates the faith because of his faithfulness. So here in verse 17, for there is the righteousness of God revealed uh, from faith to faith. What is happening here, this word righteousness uh, comes from this Greek word, the kaisune, and it's a present passive verb. So it's saying that this righteousness of God is revealed from God. Nothing else could bring that clarity. And it comes because the the reason this righteousness was revealed is because the believer believes and because he believes, it says faith to faith, then once you believe, then you are one who are living it out. So a revealing of God's kingdom, understanding that God's kingdom uh, operates off of righteousness. So when you have this clarity, do you know that when you live a life of righteousness, it's uh, one that has fairness to all parties combined with an uh, oddness of responsibility within a social context. Listen, uh, brothers and sisters, you should be uh, anxious about doing kingdom work because it's been revealed to you and only God can do that. He said it clear that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, not hearing Dale Allen, but hearing the word of God. Listen, there are times I don't understand it how churches can come together and they have all kinds of subject topics and there's no scripture involved. I, <laughs> somebody help me with that. Paul says here, it says, there is the righteous of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And here we must understand that God reveals his truth to us. Jesus said, no man can come to me except the father draws them. That's reaching right back to Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for therein is the power of God. Isn't it amazing that the God of the universe has control of you? Oh, my, my, my. Romans 1 and 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. Men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Uh, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So not only is the righteousness of God revealed in order to help us want to make an impact, but listen, God also reveals his judgment and look what Paul says here in verse 18. Says it is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Paul is saying that humanity, even though they're not saved, 
they do have a conscious knowledge of wrongdoing. And then as well, not only is he talking about those non-believers, he says anyone who, uh, anyone that's against all, uh, that does all ungodliness and unrighteousness, God's wrath is against that. And look what he says, who, who, hold, who holds the truth and righteousness. Listen, there are people, and you've been guilty, I've been guilty, we know that God's word wants us to live a life of responsibility, being focusing on being fair and impartial. You remember he even said, pray for those that despitefully misuse you. Listen, we have a responsibility. But right here, this, uh, Paul says that people suppress uh, the truth in unrighteousness. Some of you right that's listening tonight, as well as I have, I have chose to do something unrighteous in order to get my way instead of fulfilling God's purpose. Listen, we have accountability. Oh, you know who you are. You know you've been guilty. Um, Corinthians chapter 2, the second Corinthians Chapter 11, verse 3, Paul says, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his craftiness, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus who have not preached, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, we might, uh, we might well bear with him. So what Paul does in this letter to the Corinthians, just to bring some more light to how people suppress the truth, Paul says that Satan caused Eve to lose her focus. And here he's telling the church at Corinth with this word, their mind, nomata, it has the idea of the mind being... Um, uh, d uh, destroyed, uh, taken away, sincere devotion. Listen, Paul says that the, those who hold the truth in unrighteousness, that's what you're doing. You're taking away the sincerity, the sincere devotion that we should have for God when we choose unrighteousness over God's righteousness. Listen, God has done great things to hold back the lawlessness of men. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7, God restrains the man of lawlessness. If you'll read that, God is holding back the lawlessness of men. We got the laws of the land. We got all kind of policies and things in place to hold back the lawlessness of man. But the only person that has the wisdom to, to help us through that is God's word. And listen, when you have a revealing of God's word, when that light, when you've been informed like this, when it's been revealed to you, oh, you ought to be excited about making an impact for the kingdom of God. Genesis 11, 6 and 9, you remember God disrupt the language at Babel so that their sin couldn't overthrow them. God is trying his best to prevent lawlessness, but man and his frail, uh, deprived mind will take and suppress what is right. Some of you even do it to your families. Oh my God, some of you do it to your local church assembly. We're supposed to come together and be edifying. Oh, this thing is real. Second Corinthians 2 and 11 tells us that talks about Satan, that we don't wanna be ignorant of his schemes. And remember, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, it says, take God's word can help you take captive every imagination, any intellectual cons uh, uh, argument that is clever from the greatest minds. God's word can help it not prevail you to forget what Jesus Christ done so that you can help others. Paul was serious about making an impact for God's kingdom. And lastly, a revelation of God's kingdom. You must have a, to be able to make an impact in God's kingdom, you must have a reverence of God's kingdom, an awe, a devotion, an amazement, and you must have a revealing of God's kingdom when it's made known to you. Recognize that light, don't suppress it. God said he, Paul says that he's done that. And then lastly, a revelation of God's kingdom. It's been publicized. You, you can't get away with it. Ain't no need to you saying you don't know. 
Look what Paul says right here in chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood that the things that are made, even the eternal power and Godhead, so that they're without excuse. Paul has two purposes here. On one hand, Paul justifies his assertion that people suppress the truth. You know who you are. Listen, stop grieving the Holy Spirit. Stop quenching the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit, for the Spirit reveals the truth of God. And then Paul also points out, on the other hand, he wants to show people who sin are corresponding subjects to God's wrath and responsible for their situation. There are, you're without excuse. Manifest in this, in this uh, verse 19 has, it's an aorist tense. And what it's saying is, as long as we can research, you're gonna always land on the fact that God has made himself known even in creation. Romans 15 and 13 says, now the God of hope the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abide in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen, a revelation of God's kingdom, it's been publicized. There's no excuse for us not wanting to make an impact in his kingdom. We have his righteousness. We have his power. And Paul says in this Romans 15 and 13, right before that in verses 1 and 2, he says the strong have to bear the infirmity of the weak. Listen, the strong in the context is those that know how to apply scripture. Listen, I'm like Paul. I know there's been a call on my life. Some of you have a call on your life, but you're setting, allowing the world to dictate to you how you respond to your situation. But God's word tells us in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path. And I close with this. Each of us must recognize that we have received what must recognize we've been received by Christ as a manner of pure grace, and that same grace has reached out and brought into the kingdom of people from all kinds, races, nations, and backgrounds, and with all kinds of prejudice. Such differences should not never be allowed to disturb the unity of the church. My brothers and sisters, I hope tonight that in my excitement that I didn't limit you to seeing what God would have you to see tonight because we've been called to make an impact. And Great Commission, our pastor and the leadership here, we have made a great impact in this city of Fort Worth, not only in the city of Fort Worth, but we've made impacts all over the world. And it's because of those who realize that God has called us for a purpose. We've got to quit suppressing righteousness. That's why, how is it you can come to church on Sunday morning and shake hands and by the end of that service, you're mad at two or three people? How can that happen? Because we do not uh, conduct ourselves the way God's word tells us to. It says, my brother offend me, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to go to him. And in my communication, my communication is supposed to be one of edifying. I'm supposed to build you up. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because that's the power of God. That's how you unleash the power of God by sharing what is true, that his son died one Friday evening out on Calvary. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And he told his disciples, he says, go ye therefore and make disciples. And this is what Bible study is about. You should be growing. Again, thank you, Dr. Brown. God bless you and God keep you. If I don't see you again, just remember, he's on his way to the kingdom. God bless you and God keep you.
was you made and we're standing here only because you made and we're standing here only because you made hallelujah anybody grateful for every way hallelujah the ways that we couldn't see but somehow God made a way Hallelujah, we, we can see a way through somehow. He brought us through. Hallelujah, anybody grateful? Anybody grateful? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for every mountain. Highest praise, hallelujah. 